of confidence. Well, it's a very strange situation, isn't it? The guy coming off the bench every game has got 13. Yeah, Goitom is in the team ahead of him. You see, that's a, that's a lack of confidence. You've got to believe in yourself. You're up against two players, the right back, Adriano and PK, the centre half. And sometimes you've really got to manipulate that ball a lot better and have a little go as it was, the support wasn't quick enough. Here's Pedro, isolated against Luna. And picks out Messi, Messi goes for the gap, and Messi goes for the corner of the goal, and it's in. It's a bad moment for Esteban. He can't give easy goals away to Barcelona. Messi's got yet another, and Barca in the lead already. Well, that's a poor error from Esteban. We know the golden rule, that you have to hit the target. If you don't hit the target, you've got no chance of scoring. And that's all Lionel Messi does. He waltzes round a couple of challenges towards the edge of the 18-yard box. It wasn't the hardest of shots. I just wonder there was a little bubble just before it came to Esteban. We know that Pep Guardiola has been saying that the pitch here at the new Camp isn't good enough. It just takes a little bounce on the six-yard box. But a goalkeeper of his standing should do a lot better than that. Goes down far too easily, far too quickly. He'll be disappointed, and so will Jose Luis Ultra, because they had started quite well, Almeria. Esteban is 35, and he doesn't play any games, he's played a single game in the league. They've got a Brazilian goalkeeper, a very talented goalkeeper called Diego Alves. As good a shot stopper as there is, probably playing in Spain at the moment. Here's Piazzi. That's a, repair, a little bit of the damage, but another... Yeah, from Argentina, there were plenty of them around in La Liga, it was Barcelona to... Given it as high feet, doesn't he, against Abidal? And then an indirect free kick in the penalty area. Well, that doesn't make sense to me. As far as I'm concerned, that ball should be on the 12 yard spot and it should be a penalty for Al Maria. It's a foul challenge, it's a foul challenge, isn't it? It is. Anyway, free kick. We'll see if Al Maria can get something out of this. It is Cruzat. 
And of course, it's quickly closed down by those pacey Barcelona players. There's Goiton with the overhead, and it's over. What a start. Well, I'm slightly perplexed about that. Because if that was a dangerous challenge, as it was from Eric Abidal, you have to say it's a penalty kick. Very surprised. And I'm sure the, the lads in the studio will certainly be remarking about that one towards half time. As you'd like to say, John, it's a two legged affair. And if Al Maria can get themselves a goal back, which there was certainly an opportunity there, the game would still be on. But I just felt sorry that they set their stall out. They're a decent counter attack inside, but two poor errors by the goalkeeper. Just a minute apart as well, those two dreadful moments for Estefan. But there was a little sign there, wasn't there? The Barcelona can be caught out of it. Here they go again. It's Goiton. It's into the side netting. Well, there's another chance for Goiton. You have to say once again, Cruzat does really well. Playing it into the path. You see that Piquet's just caught himself slightly out of position. He tries to head it. And Abadal just comes along, just puts the, the big striker off. But another opportunity, and that's one thing that has really disappointed with Goiton this year. Doesn't hit the target enough. Carano forward, Maserano. Barney quickly in, good touch by... to describe this Barcelona squad. The only stats originally that were in favour of Almeria was that they had scored more goals than Barcelona in the Copa del Rey, which has now been level at 17 each. And Almeria have won all three of their away games, whilst Barcelona haven't. And that's where the stats end. We know that before the game, John, they were 18 to one to win tonight, Almeria, and nine to one to get a draw. I don't think I'll be uh, chanting a pound on that anymore. Well, Barcelona were 20 to 1 on, weren't they? I, I told you to put some money on that. You'd have got your, you'd have put a pound for your 20 pounds, wouldn't you? So you, you'd have had to put a, quite a few thousands of pounds to recoup anything from that. Marie have never been this far in the Copa del Rey before. Not sure they'll be going any further. Here's Pedro. Only their fourth season. 
playing as a top flight club, Almeria. In various Almerias before, but this one was formed in 2001. And they've had pretty good success, mainly under Unai Emery. And they've rapidly changed coaches since then. Also, is their second of the season. The last one was sacked after the other game against Barcelona, a nil eight. And now, in 108 minutes of football against Barcelona, they've conceded 11 goals. Via. Goes over, and no foul by Beer. I oh, just look at the back four for Al Maria. As you see there, Beer contesting there with Macedo. But look at the back four, and they don't seem to be in sync with each other. And a lot of the time, Carlos Garcia is being drawn out too many times to go and pick up Lionel Messi. Creates massive holes in that central area. Fair description, but I think this one is better. I do as well. I've not seen a better side, I think, during my career. It's what I've seen this season. And obviously the, the demolition is the only way you can describe it against Real Madrid. It was just unbelievable. Well, the could, could they meet on a, two or three more occasions during the course of the season? Certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Real Madrid, a goal up on the away leg against Sevilla earlier. Barcelona sitting pretty comfortable here. And of course, well, who knows what will happen with the Champions League. Here's Iniesta. So Barcelona got Arsenal coming up in the Champions League, and I think that'll be a decent game. Because Arsenal on their day will give anyone a game. Here's Maxwell. The more of a game now, Maria up. Giatti with a little clip. Yeah, just 
just trying to a little subtle trip. Just be interested to see as well what happens with Piatti towards the end of the season, whether or not he stays with Almeria. We know that he come for just over seven million euros from Estudiantes, and I'm sure there will be two or three clubs looking at that player. We know that Villarreal are interested, Espanyol are interested, and could be one or two more. Messi driving for the heart of the defence again, and he wins the ball back himself. Strong play by Vargas. Macedo tries to pick out Piatti. Enough pace to trouble the Barcelona defence. Barcelona, the 25 times winners of the Copa del Rey. No club has won it more. Won it, of course, in the travel season two years ago. And that happened quite a barren spell for a few years. Determined to win it this year. Strong lineup. Input, a relatively strong lineup. The second leg against Betis when there were five goals up from the first game. Xavi to Villa. But Maxwell in support, David Beer, not just go alone, we'll come back to Chavi. And it was blocked and should be offside against David Beer. As he slots it in, it doesn't count. Yeah, but you can see how sharp David Beer is. He knows that he's offside, but he still does what all good goal scorers should do, is just put it into the back of the net and ask questions later. But once again, he saw with David Beer, causing Michel Macedo so much aggravation. Down that left hand side, and Macedo's right. And Macedo's not sure whether or not he's going to go right or if he's going to go left. And that's how good David Villa is. He gets the defenders off balance so many times. Iniesta. Xavi again, swarming around in the blue shirts for Almeria. Getting the ball away from him is another matter. Support coming from. Mascherano will be a collector's item. Well, some groups of maybe he doesn't really score a lot of goals, but you can see there when Iniesta's got that ball in the central area that he's not looking to try and play the ball wide. They're looking to try and go through the heart of the defence all the time. Little flicks, little bit of movement, little bit of support. Go top, Piatti's onside here. Good pace though by Maxwell. So in Brazil, Argentina clash. Balls in a Barcelona goal. I don't think that will happen too often. It certainly won't, but what you said about the, the starting lineup for, for Barca tonight, you just have to look at who's on the sub bench as well. Here's Pedro. Pedro goes for the far corner. <laughs> Juggling by Esteban. But also, does have his heart in his mouth at the moment when it goes near his goalkeeper. As soon as Pedro had that shot and he just patted that ball down, I was thinking, oh no, not again. Fortunately, he was very lucky. You see that Iniesta playing that ball out to, to Pedro. Comes in on his left hand side, just pats that ball down. But there was Lionel Messi just lurking, just in case the goalkeeper made another mistake. Answer your question, by the way. Victor Valdez on the bench, Melito, young defender Martin Montoya, Sergio Busquets, and Sergio Keita, Bojan, who has been ill this week actually, but he's on the bench, and Ibrahim Affele. Interesting about Affele, he's a, a Dutch international, PSV to Barcelona. And he went for three million euros. He's out of contact. He was due to be out of contact with PSV in the summer. Not an entity, Charlie Allen, developed for three million euros for him. Napoli, it's quite cheap. I think it sets a bit of a precedent when you look at players of Napoli's ability. Going for three million, you see that Lionel Messi is certainly not happy. 
with an off the ball incident. You see there with Carlos Garcia. Just getting himself very tight. Just wrapped his arm around the neck of Messi. But a good throw as he is, he gets up, gets on with it. Not sure whether the orange boots suit the kit. But it won't matter to Lionel Messi, will it? 35 goals. And he can wear whatever colour he likes. Oh. You always say, when you see a, a player in strange coloured boots, you say, well, you know, how good are you? Can you just defy it? Well, you're always a target, John. You're always a target for the opposition. He could wear any colour he wanted. Oh. So can most of the Barcelona players. One of the three best players in the world, according to the Ballon d'Or judges. Oh, just had a touch of Messi, Iniesta and Xavi, here's Adriano, Brazilian international, it's got to be a free kick, surely. They've been allowed to get away with quite a lot, Almeria is a nice in my opinion, bit of sympathy for being 3-0 down. Just slightly strange, really, that you have to say that Pedro tries to go, sorry, Adriano tries to go beyond Carlos Garcia, and the assistant, who's no more than six or seven yards away, doesn't even raise his flag. It's only when the referee blows his whistle does the assistant put his flag up. Oh, great ch challenge, you have to say, from Carlos Garcia. And I have to say that he's a player who doesn't look full of confidence. Mind you, a lot of players don't when they play Barcelona. Xavi's free kick for Barcelona, and that is number four. Brilliant header by little Pedro. What a goal that was, on the half-hour mark, they make it four, and Pedro marks his 100th senior appearance for Barcelona in style. Well, if I was Jose Luis Ultra, the question I will be asking is how is a player at five foot nine able to go and win a substantial header inside and around the six-yard box? Yes, it's a decent ball by Xavi, but a player of that height should not be winning it as comfortable and easy as it was. But give credit where credit's due. The timing was superb. The jump was superb as he knocks it towards the far post.